In this video, we're going to take a look at the geometric distribution. So the geometric distribution is used to model the number of trials needed to achieve the first success. So for example, how many times will you have to roll a dice until it lands on a three for the first time? Now in terms of the notation here to represent a geometrically distributed random variable, so if we have a random variable, let's call that x here, and it follows a geometric distribution, then we denote this as follows. So x here follows a geometric distribution with parameter of p, where p is the fixed probability of success in any one trial. So let's take a look then at the conditions required here for a geometric distribution to be appropriate. So for the first condition, we require that the outcome of each trial is independent. For the second condition, we require that there are two possible outcomes for each trial, which we know as success and failure. And then finally, we require that the probability of success is the same for each trial. Now, it is important that you are familiar with each of these conditions here for a geometric distribution. Sometimes in an exam, you might be asked to give one or two reasons why a geometric distribution would be appropriate for the given model in your question. Okay, so these are the three conditions here that we need to be familiar with. So like I said, just familiarize yourself with these three conditions. So to help illustrate the concepts here of how probabilities work for the geometric distribution, let's just start by considering the probability of rolling a three for the first time with a fair dice. So the probability that x equals one is equal to one over six. What do we mean by this? Well, we roll the dice and on the very first roll of the dice, we actually get a three, right? So in that case, it's simply one over six, okay? Now for the probability that x equals two, well, what do we have here? Well, in this case, then we have two rolls of the dice. Now with the first roll of the dice, we don't get a three. So in that case, the probability is five over six. However, then on the second roll of the dice, we do get a three. So in that case, then the probability that x equals two is equal to five over six times one over six. Let's keep going. So now for the probability that x equals three, well, as you can see here, we have three rolls of the dice now. So on the first two rolls, we don't get a three. However, then on the third roll, we do get a three. So it's going to be five over six times five over six times one over six. And hopefully you can see the pattern that's about to form here. So let's just do one more example here then. So now the probability that x equals four, as you can see, we now have four rolls of the dice. With the first three rolls of the dice, we don't get a three. However, then with the final roll, the fourth roll, we do get a three. Okay, so that probability then is five over six times five over six times five over six times by one over six, okay? Now clearly this would just keep going on and on and on, or it could in theory, right? We could keep rolling the dice and we might not get a three. So let's just generalize this. So we can generalize this to give the probability that x equal to some value, let's call that little x, and this is equal then to p times one minus p to the power of x minus one, okay? And hopefully you can see that the probabilities here simply follow the pattern of a geometric sequence with the first term being p, and the common ratio being one minus p, okay? So in that case, then we can easily derive the cumulative distribution by considering the sum of the terms of the geometric series. Now, I won't demonstrate that for this video here. What I'm gonna do is just give you the actual probability, um, but do feel free to have a go at that as an exercise. Um, and I'm gonna do a separate members video for that, just so you can see that in a little bit more detail, but I won't go into too much detail here um, within this video. So to finish with then, let's look at the probabilities for a geometric distribution. So if x follows a geometric distribution with parameter p, then we can use the following probabilities here. Now for the first probability then, we've already introduced this. This was on the previous page then, when we was looking at the probability of rolling a three for the first time with a fair six-sided dice, okay? Now for the next two, these are cumulative probabilities. And as I've mentioned, I'm not going to show the derivation of these probabilities in this video. We will do that in a separate video. But for now, I just want you to be aware that you can use these probabilities without proof. Okay. So that gives us everything that we need then for our introduction here to the geometric distribution. Let's take a look now at some practice questions. Starting off with question one then, where we have the random verbal x, which follows a geometric distribution with parameter of 0.2. So for this question here, we want to find three probabilities. So let's start then with part A. So for part A here, we're looking for the probability that x equals eight. So to find this probability here, we need to use the following result. So the probability that our random variable x here is equal to some value, let's call this little x. This is equal to p times one minus p 
to the power then of x minus 1. So applying that now to this example here then where p equals 0.2. So let's just write down the actual probability that we want. So the probability that x equals a. In that case then we would get 0.2 times 1 minus p. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.2. And that's the power of 8 minus 1 because x in this case is 8. So 8 minus 1 there. Simplify this here. We have 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 to the power of 7. So 0 0.8 to the power of 7 here. And then to evaluate this here, we simply need to use our calculator. And if you do this correctly, then what you should get is 0 0.0. So 0 0.0419. Okay. And that is two free significant figures there. So that's the solution to part A. Now for part B then, we're looking for the probability that X is less than or equal to five. So to evaluate this cumulative probability here, we require the probability that our random variable X here is less than or equal to some value. Let's call this little X again. And to evaluate this probability here, we use the following result. So this is one minus bracket 1 minus p to the power of x. Okay, so therefore, for our example here, for the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, this is equal then to 1 minus 1 minus p, where p equals 0 0.2. So 1 minus 0 0.2 to the power of x, where for this example here, x equals 5. Okay. Simplify this here then, so we get 1 minus now, well 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8, so we get 1 minus 0 0.8 to the power of 5. So again, just simply use your calculator here to evaluate this probability. And if you do this correctly then, what you should find is you get 0 0.67 to 2, 3 significant figures. So 0 0.672 there. Okay, and there we have it, so that is the solution to part B. And then finally, we have part C here, where we're now looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10. So to find this probability here, we require the following result. So we require that the probability of our random variable x here is greater than or equal to some value. Let's call this little x here. This must be equal then to 1 minus p. So 1 minus p to the power of x minus 1. Okay. So in that case, the probability x is greater than or equal to 10. This is equal to 1 minus p, so that's 1 minus 0 0.2, to the power of x minus 1, so that would be 10 minus 1 there. So in that case, then we get um, 0 0.8 to the power of 9. So 0 0.8 to the power of 9 here. And again, just one more time, just evaluate this on your calculator. And if you do this correctly, then what you should get here is 0 0.134. Okay, so 0 0.134 there. And there we have it, so it gives us the solution to part C and the solution to question one. So if we just say, look then at one more question here, we have question two where we're looking at the probability of Tom passing his driving theory test on any one attempt being given as 0 0.7. So for this question here, just like we saw for the previous question, we want to find three probabilities. So let's start with part one then. Now for part one, before we even look at finding any probabilities here, we need to start by defining the random variable that we're going to use to model this situation. So if I choose x here as my random variable, x will follow a geometric distribution with parameter of 0 0.7. Okay, so for the first probability here, we're looking for the probability that he passes on the fourth attempt. The way that we mathematically denote this here is the probability then that our random variable x here is equal to four. Okay. And the way that we find this here then would be p times one minus p to the power of x minus one. So we get 0 0.7 times one minus 0 0.7 to the power then of x minus 1, so that would be 4 minus 1 here. Okay, so we simplify this and we get 0 0.7 times 1 
times, well, this would be 0 0.3 to the power of 3. So just use your calculators here to evaluate this probability. And if you do this correctly, then what you should get is um, 0 0.0189. So 0 0.0189 here. Okay. So that's a solution to part one. Now for part two then, we're now looking for the probability that he needs five or fewer attempts to pass. So again, the way that we mathematically denote this here is the probability that X is less than or equal to five. So to find this here, this would be one minus one minus P to the power of X. We do one minus one minus P here, which is 0 0.7. And that is to the power of X, where in this case, X equals five. Okay, so we simplify this, then we get one minus here. Well, this is not point three. So we get one minus not point three to the power of five. Again, just use your calculator to evaluate this probability here. And if you do this correctly, what you should get then is not point nine seven three. Okay, and then finally we arrive at the very last part here, part three. So for part three, then we're now looking for the probability that he needs at least five attempts to pass. So if we mathematically denote this probability here, this is the probability then that X is greater than or equal to five. Okay, if he needs at least five, then X is greater than or equal to five. And the way that we find this here is one minus P to the power of X minus one. So we do one minus 0.7, to the power of x minus one, so that's gonna be five minus one here. So what I get then is 0 0.3 to the power of four. Again, just use your calculator to evaluate this probability here. So 0 0.3 to the power of four, this gives us 0 0.0081. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to the very last part. And that gives us the solution to question two. And that brings the end of this video on the geometric distribution.